Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining this Talent Miners podcast, Reimagining the HR Business Partner. My name is Andrew Zach, Talent Minders Principal Consultant and Founder, and I'm proud to bring to you another of our podcasts that aim to cut through the HR jargon, conventional wisdom, and politesse to share real world lessons uh, learned by accomplished HR leaders about how to drive greater value in this new 21st century, very different from, from our last century, as we'll, as we'll explore and discover. Business challenges are changing and priorities are changing. HR needs to contemplate changing as well to keep up with the pace of not only change, but business requirements. I'm happy to have one of uh, HR leadership's greats on the program uh, this week. Uh, you'll, you'll get to know what I mean in just a moment. But you know, before starting a successful international consulting business, Luke Vanderbroek, held several business and HR leadership positions at Fortune 500 companies, including the great Medtronic, also Boston Scientific, among others. So today, Luke is going to share his perspective and experience and help us to better understand how the HR business partner can transform from serving as a personnel manager, a purely customer service provider to deliver uh, greater excellence uh, in, in this space. Serving from a personnel manager to a strategic value con business contributor, a challenge still faced across many organizations. Stick around too. We, as we close today, Luke will be sharing with you five proven development strategies that will help you prepare to deliver HR business excellence in the 21st century very different strategies as those employed in the last century, some of which you may not be familiar with. So stick around. So welcome, Luke. With that introduction, let's get started. And uh, it's great to see you uh, today. Maybe a good place to start is with you, actually. <laughs> a oh, brief thank you, Andrew. Yeah, well, you know, tell us about who, who you are, what you do, and where you mm -hmm. work today, and, and then maybe just briefly, um, you know, how you developed your career and ultimately became, you know, I would say proficient in that strategic HR business partnering space. Well, thank you very much, Andrew. Uh, really appreciate being on this podcast and a uh, warm welcome to, to the audience. And um, just starting off, I mean, everybody will at some point in time hear in my accent, I'm from the Netherlands. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, you know, in, in, in all of that, maybe <clears throat> I use some Dutch words every now and then and, and have you guess what they mean and what they look for. Um, well, I have to I'm, admit, I have to admit, <laughs> the, <laughs> you're, you're the only Dutchman I've met that has an American accent. There you go. So there it's a, it's go. a, it's a beautiful blend between sort of North America and the European continent. It's, it's, it's one, it's one of the secrets. I'm going to share those, uh, uh, maybe after the podcast, what you know that came all about. Um, well, good. Um, Career-wise, uh, <laughs> it's kind of interesting. How to say? I'm in the HR arena, and guess what? I have a finance background. So, what do you know? It's still possible. Uh, the first ten years of my career, I worked in um, in, in finance positions, and um, I learned a lot about business. That's where the basis of my career started, I think. And if you look nowadays, what I do, um, I run, I found it and I run Next Step Talent. We focus on talent development, people development, and maybe the, 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 the most important thing of all, uh, making a connection, synchronizing strategies with your workforce. Uh, the talent that is there, the organizational uh, design that is needed, looking at what do you need in the next couple of years um, to be successful, and then how do you, does it translate in what you need from the people in your organization? Um, cool. Having the finance background helps tremendously, Andrew, uh, to understand the P&L and the balance sheet and the forecast and the budget. So how in the world did you make a transition to, to, to HR from finance? Yeah. And, and perhaps, it, you know, why did you do that? 
Well, and, 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 and here it is. I mean, when I started off in, in, in finance, um, you know, that's cool in the education system. Uh, I met a dean who said, look, whatever you're going to do, don't get involved in, 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 in social you know, activities, you know, don't get involved in the people business. You know, you got to do, stay in the numbers business, whatever you're going to do. It's, that's one of the big advices that I'm going to give you. And, you know, way back then, I just follow at that point. Mm -hmm. And actually, I like being with the, you know, working with the finance. Um, now, all of a sudden, what happens, I was given the opportunity to provide educational sessions with finance managers, controllers all around the world mm -hmm. in all different kinds of cultures. Mm -hmm. And what do you know? I found out that I actually like that. Um, and working with people in different cultures and having them understand how to grow and how to um, find out everything about the functional details, but also the interaction and communications and leadership, how that would enrich their career and how it would push them forward to greater heights or stuff that they never thought they would achieve. Um, so I found out at the learning and development area that actually this could be nice. Um, and I made that step in working with other people, with, our, with other departments, having them understand what it is all about. And that's how I encountered um, people from the HR department and having to understand uh, what they were looking for, from performance management to talent development to competency development, recruitment, um, all these kind of things that I you know, was never really involved with uh, other than on the employee side. Now, all of a sudden, it became clear, I actually like that. Um, and that's how it all started, Andrew. Okay, fantastic. Interesting. Yeah. I bet the, uh, the, uh, the finance uh, background, I mean, what, what was your, uh, so this is interesting, as we, as we transition to, to the next question, just mm -hmm. a quick, uh, quick perspective. You were a client then uh, at that time from, uh, I guess you had an HR business partner or provider that was supporting you and your team. At yeah. that time, what was your uh, experience with, uh, with the HR service? Well, I, you know, it's, it's at that point in time, I saw them, you know, working very hard and trying to bring an added value and at the same time struggling to make the connection between what they were focusing on and how that would serve the business. Um, and, 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 you know, even today, if you look at an annual report, you know, it's the first page that probably says, and let's be totally blunt here, right? It says, um, you know, people are our biggest assets, you know, yep. and then the next 345 pages is all about numbers. Um, so it's, 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 it's way back then, it, it was the same there and, 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 and HR was really struggling to make a difference and um, basically brought in, brought in all the performance management stuff, the, 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 the HR systems, the, um, the surveys, everything was there and it was like you checked the box, you did it, but it wasn't really making a link between what the added value was and how it really supported any function, division, business unit, or company to be successful and reach the goals that they uh, set to reach. Um, that's, that's interesting that you say that. There's, a, there's an interesting uh, paper that, that I know we've, we've referenced together from, uh, from McKinsey. Mm. And, uh, and I'm just going to read uh, a, a, a small a piece from that. And I wanted to get your perspective on this. And it, it reads, in, the paper is called The Critical Importance of the HR Business Partnership. And, and for those of you who out there who are listening or watching this who have not read this, highly recommend it. You can find it at McKinsey Insights. And it says, just as a business unit CFO doesn't have control over over spending decisions, but influences the entire profit and loss center. An HR business partner must possess the credibility and authority to drive important talent decisions. Um, so what are your thoughts about that? Yes, why, yes or no? Do you agree with that? Oh, oh, oh yeah, absolutely. Um, fully, fully um, support, endorse that statement. Um, and, and, and to me, if I look at my own career, um, 
understanding the, 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 the data, understanding the market, getting involved in what the business is all about um, helped me tremendously um, to work from an HR perspective and, and help actually being the, um, the, the middleman actually between all of the, the, the people processes and the people tools uh, to the business. And, and, and having the business understand why it is important to develop people, why it is important to walk the talk, why to have leadership available, uh, but not from per se from that theoretical approach, no, but from the business side to look at, hey, if one of the strategic areas that you're in is like, hey, we need to expand into a different region, expand our footprint, um, bring a new product to market, uh, go into an M&A cycle, you know, acquiring one of your competitors. Um, it all comes down to, do I have the right people in the right place? So having that value and support all of that is not just for the sake of having the right people on board, it's having the right people at the right place so that it supports that strategy and getting into reaching the goals that you set all along. Cool, yeah, yeah. And uh, the going back to that that statement from McKinsey, um, so why you you agreed with this? Why why then does the HR business partner why must they possess the credibility and authority to drive important talent decisions? Yeah, it's it's the and credibility. Then how, do you, how, how do you get that credibility and authority? Yeah, it's it's credibility is one of the things. It goes for, uh, for every function, not only HR, right? If you sit at the table where the decisions are being made, uh, you need to have the credibility to talk all about all the uh, items that are important, not mm -hmm. only your own HR uh, mm -hmm. topics. Um, and, 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 and the funny thing is, have, have, you know, when we said at management teams or executive board uh, meetings, um, it's, 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 it's kind of funny. If you talk about sales or marketing or research or manufacturing, um, those are all specifics. And there's not everybody at the table is always participating in those discussions. The credibility comes at the moment that everybody around the table can discuss these items and has a working knowledge about what it means and what's important and what needs to be done and why there are priorities to be made on every you know, level within that organization. As HR, if I understand what manufacturing is all about, if I know what continuous improvement is all about, that makes a difference. That's mm. when people say, all right, so now I can make the connection between having the right organizational structure, having the right um, people on board, building the right teams, and making sure you got successor in place. Mm. That's, that's what it is. Every professional sport teams has probably a bench with the exact same skills um, and, and experiences just as, as, as a backup because of all the games they need to play in all mm. the areas that they uh, are, are present. Mm -hmm. And as an HR person, you, you know, if you have that understanding and you know what it takes, if your organization says, we'll go to, to another country, okay, do I have people there that understand that country? Do I understand the business that is being done there? And, and that's how you, in, in my view, um, if I can make direct to the, 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 the money impact, to the, um, the quality impact, to the sustainability impact, to the, the safety impact, to the environment impact, if I can translate it to all of these things, um, that means you got a whole that's holistic awesome. approach to yeah. your organization, not only HR. Yeah, well, that becomes a completely different perspective. Uh, you know, firstly, it's, it's a very strategic perspective. And that's really where you're starting from. By understanding the business, you're, you're framing, you know, a, a, a solution uh, that is strategic and it's got foresight, it's got insight, and it's based on, um, you know, a lot of information beyond just HR processes. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, and it's a much more complicated decision. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's interesting you say this because uh, I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but some of our, some of our uh, friends and colleagues as they're developing in their careers or maybe they're new in a senior position 
and they, they, they kind of feel like, you know, okay, Andrew, this example you gave us earlier from McKinsey, this statement, mm. that's fine for the CFO. I mean, that guy is, he's in the numbers. Everyone knows him. He's intimately mm. in the system and they trust him. They can't work without him. We're, we're HR. Okay. We have a seat at the table, but at the end of the day, really, I mean, I'm not sure we, we can generate or nor do we need to generate the same level or demonstrate the same level of credibility and authority uh, in making talent decisions. Um, yeah. Have you experienced that before? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, um, you, know, you know, both ways, right? When I was at finance, you experience it and you look at it from the other side, another angle. Mm -hmm. um, and time and time again, it's, it's about, you know, um, all right, here it is. It's about people. And we're not the first one to say that, right? Right. Absolutely. Uh, you, you, yeah. you could have the best strategy in the world. <laughs> if there's nobody there to execute on it, you're not going to reach what you want to reach. Um, and at the same time, what you see is a clear need for the right people at the right time, with the right focus. Now, who brings in the talent into the organization? Who provides, who attracts you know, the right talent for your organization? To me, it's like, you can talk about, yes, great vision, yes, great culture, yes, great leadership. Yeah, there's an engaging environment. To me, it's always been like, if you're not winning in your organization, nothing is gonna happen. Hmm. If there's not a winning opportunity, if there's not a reason for me to say, hey, there is a possibility for success, I want to be a part of it. That's where you start looking. All right, what's my role to be part of the success, not being part of the organization? Excellent. Yeah. Yeah, that was your perspective. That's the perspective. You know, That's how I look at it. Whatever yeah. level you are, Andrew, you know, you don't need to be the, the top leader of that function or that region. If you're an entry level HR worker coming in, you're an HR specialist or generalist, ask yourself, what role do I need to be play to be part of that winning team, group, organization? And, and I think from, a, from an HR business partnering perspective, one of the challenges has been <clears throat> almost our legacy that we are, we've been conditioned to be subservient, subservient rather, uh, you know, reactive um, and sort of playing sort of second fiddle, uh, almost note taker in these environments, whereas the CFO and even this, uh, you know, COO or the, CT, uh, the, the head of IT, yeah. Um, uh, and others are, are definitely uh, more prominent. And I think taking the approach that you outline is, is really smart. I mean, it's, you know, being in that environment, if you are armed with, uh, you know, the, the business awareness and knowledge, and if you recognize that your role is much more strategic uh, and can have a significant impact on the business, and you have the, the wherewithal to understand, you know, how to help the business move forward, whether it's into new markets, even branding, manpower planning, um, yeah. you know, education, societal issues, whatever, come to the table with all those facets so that you can influence others and affect decisions. Um, it's, I think, when you don't have any of that information. And so this is what you referred to, I think, far beyond just the business, too. Oh, it's looking... Uh, yeah. Far beyond that, you're even talking yeah. about, you know, what are the governments doing? Um, and in some cases, I, from my experience with you, um, you know, the, the business was, they, they learned a lot from you. In many cases, you were more aware and knowledgeable than they were about where their business was headed from a, from a people standpoint. Am I right? Not, not, not sure about that, but thank you for saying that. But at the same time, it's like, understanding the market, the business, the surroundings that you're in, then you recognize what has an impact. And that's with everything. It's like, you know, in, in, in my own organization with the people here, if we talk about it, we help people going into the next step of their career. Um, we always talk about if you know what you're looking for, you're probably going to find it. If you don't know what you're looking for, it's going to be a tough job to do so. As yeah. an organization, if you know where you're going, 
And if you can break that down into bits and pieces and be clear to everybody within your company, what you're trying to achieve, then everybody can start looking for the role that they are best at to reach those goals. So not only for HR, for everybody. So if I know the influences that are there, you know, actually we're living in a time, day and age right now with COVID-19 that nobody could expect to have such a dramatic influence uh, on organizations and economics and everything. And at the same time, what you see is people start to reinvent what they're working at, come up with different solutions. So the, having the flexibility, having, having also the audacity basically to, to be prepared to do something different and ask yourself the question in the current, current situation, what's my role? How do I bring added value? And what is needed of me in this very moment to help the organization being successful? And that's 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 very important, and that's that's a challenge that we'll we'll come up to as well, yeah. uh, because um, you know at the end of the day, one of one of the one of the um, you know the rationale for this topic uh, today is is to is to really um, you know ask the question, um, you know, is there a need to reimagine the HR business partner role, <clears throat> um, and 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 asking that question in light of a a changing world context that we we see all around us. I, I think there is, and I think you're making that case very nicely. Um, the, the, the question is, you know, um, and I, I want the audience to know too, uh, you know, you're very pragmatic. And so and you're, you're speaking from experience mm. and not from a theater, theoretical base. No. Um, so help us then understand if, you know, how, you know, how, how can we do that? How can we elevate ourselves, you know, we, we continue to hear from businesses that mm. <clears throat> the HR business partner struggles to add value. Um, what continues to go wrong? Um, and two, two questions here. What continues yeah. to be, you know, the challenging factor there? And the second one is, in what way can the HR business partner role transform from continuing to serve as a personnel manager to yeah. one that is strategic, a value add business contributor? Yeah. Well, it's, and, and well, I'm, you're right. I mean, I'm, I'm not in the theoretical um, areas, read books, all, all the things, go to, to conferences and learn about that. But at the same time, um, I'm talking about my own experiences and, and those up till now, I've, I've seen a lot of people in HR um, that started off in an administrative role and then on the side get some questions about can you help the business mm. um like with everything if you do something on the side it doesn't get the focus that it needs to be successful so what i've seen so far and where i've been is i worked i was lucky enough to work in organizations that understood the importance of an hr business partner and that was a that was a day job. That was like more than 40 hours a week. Um, and the focus there was working with the business, not from like say, okay, you need to follow a process or you need to, I don't know, hire 40 people in a week. Um, that's not the kind of focus that there is. Um, if, if I can focus on what the business needs, if, and, and again, if it, it, it's all about the goals and objectives that were set. It's all about the strategy. And if, if that's being translated into a, a pragmatic thing, okay, what do I need to do right now? That means if you and I take a trip and we go to Rome. That'd be fun. That will be fun. <laughs> so what do we do if we walk out the door? <laughs> Do we go left or do we go right to get there? So it's the first step, first small step there already is making that decision. And why is that? It means you think it through, where do you want to go? What is there that you need to focus on? And like with everything, if we say, hey, we would like to expand our footprint, do we have enough people? Do we have the talent that goes with that? Um, do we have enough coaching power there? To, to work with that? Is there enough training facilities in our organization? Is there a link? What's our measurements? What do we do with HR analytics? 
you know, are, are we uh, as, as a controller looking backwards all the time and feel good about what we did? Or do we use the data to come up with trends and, 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 and come up with a scenario basically that says, hey, we got a couple of options here and whatever happens, we are prepared from the models that we put in place just to react instantly. That's a different approach from an HR perspective is thinking about what is needed you take you 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 know where you're going you know what kind of road you're going to take but you don't know what you're going to encounter on that journey who was your role model <clears throat> if i can ask did you did you have a, a role model a mentor i'm thinking of uh, maybe some of the younger hr players out there today and they may be thinking you know gee you know all i have is on the left side i have my cipd for example my yeah. certification that's pretty theoretical but it's also yep. very practical stuff but it's you know it doesn't get into what you're talking about how do i get from the sort of the the the, the traditional um into the what ulrich was trying to convey 20 years ago uh yeah. how do i get there who can i watch who can i talk to yeah who did I you mean, talk that, to yeah well it, it began uh, ulrich has been one of the people that i've been you know talking to and listening to uh, alongside his fellows way back then, uh, Wayne Brockbank and, 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 and others. Um, but honestly, the, more, the most people that were at HR roles that I you know, looked at and I learned from, uh, they came from a bit of business background. Interesting. They made a switch in their career at some point in time uh, a, a bold switch basically to say, hey, that's what, give, give me like an operations role. Give me a, a commercial role. Uh, give me a supply chain role. Um, it's, it's like maybe they did that for a couple of years uh, or even say, oh, you know what? Let me run a country. Give me a full p &L responsibility. Let me understand what it means, you know, to be under, under sales pressure, under quality pressure, That's under awesome. yeah. all these kind of things. Um, and then when you talk about the HR processes, I remember them and every time again, the only thing they said, Luke, so what? So if you talk about all these great things, so what? Yeah, What's so in what? it for me? What's in it for the organization? What is it going to change and how is it going to help us getting there where we want to be? Could, could you give us an example of that? Um, oh, yeah, let, me, let me think about that. It's, oh, uh, gee, I, I, I remember one time that we said, all right, we need to do something in Russia. And we did not have like anything going on from a business perspective in Russia. Um, and we said, okay, do we know how difficult it is in such an environment to go there? Um, and, you know, getting the right people on board, working with the authorities, and all, all, all of the problems that you could think of, you will find them. And, and what, what we came down to is say, okay, what do we need from a representation in the organization, in, 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 in that country? Um, who, ha even from our suppliers, who have done this before? It's, it's like mapping out how other companies went through it, learning le lessons learned. Who an organization has worked with, with, with companies that have done this step already, who've been there already brought them all together and said, okay, let's share all of the stories that we have and let, let, look at all the scars that everybody has from going through this process and not being prepared. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where we said, okay, now we, that's what the, we, we identified the functions that we needed, the roles that we needed and said, okay, now we start looking for them and how do we find them and how do we connect from a communication perspective into what we need to achieve which means from a preparation perspective, it took us a longer time to be ready. But when we went into Russia, we were ready to set up the organization as we wanted it to be. Mm. In hindsight, oh. we only could have done that. And it's not all about the HR perspective. It's more about understand the environment, the culture, the business ethics, the everything that's an opportunity is a potential obstacle, right? Mm. And, and within that thinking, it becomes a completely different mindset. You're a project mm. leader, you're, it, it's, it's like, you know, um, being a scout, go out there and see what's there and understand mm. what it is. Getting all of the information that everybody has is knowledge gathering. 
Mm. And again, there's not a lot of HR uh, courses that talks about that. That's interesting. <clears throat> interesting. I like, I'd like to uh, pick up on that. And that um, you said some of the stronger sort of leaders in the, in the, in our, in our field uh, have been guys or girls that have transitioned from a, from a line, a line position. Yeah. Maybe they've gone into the HR and they've gone back into the, back into the operations world. What, what did they bring that, uh, that was so attractive to you as you were developing your career that you did find in the traditional sort of HR structure? Well, uh, first and foremost, it is like looking at- Style, the skills, I don't know. What, yeah. what was so attractive to you? What was it, so it's, helpful? It's, it's like, if, if, if you've been in those line roles, then, then you can see already. I, I always looked at people that have been a country manager or um, a divisional leader, mm. had a bigger responsibility had to, to overlook like in, in, in being part of customer facing and not customer facing roles, mm. you know, and then having the discussions that go with that, it gives you, uh, it's invaluable to get the information about what the business is all about, what you run into, what competition does, um, and therefore how to set up your organization. Mm. Now, this is the kind of stories when you bring them back into an HR organization if it, for an HR role, for me, it meant like it became a life. You know, it's, it's something that is there that you mm -hmm. think, okay, whatever I'm going to do, it has an impact on the sales rep that is in front of a customer, mm -hmm. gets feedback, comes back into the organization, talks to customer service, all the quality, all the manufacturing, and how does that then work? Mm -hmm. You know, and who is talking to whom? And the, the, the interesting part of that, now the, the moment that you get into automated processes, you know, you implement an ERP system, then all of a sudden everything is connected. So mm -hmm. if one role does A, another role says, hey, that has an impact on me. Mm -hmm. And before that you were fully depending on people talking to each other. Mm -hmm. Now with the line people, you understand already in a very early phase, especially with those that are customer facing, they get instant feedback whether the mm. product or service is working or not. And they can see it at the customer's face whether they're happy, yes or no. And, and, and how did that help you as a, as a, as a mentoring uh, yeah. opportunity? Yeah, well, at that moment in time, you can ask yourself the question, whatever I'm doing here, how does it relate to that experience that you have outside? Mm. Because I think, you know, it's, it's something that I've heard in, in, my, in my career, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as we think about uh, development, uh, longer term development, we always include in that bag of tricks, mm -hmm. um, you know, mobilization, you know, a rotational uh, right. yeah. rotation. So, you know, Andrew, you know, go into the field for a couple of years, get some exposure, some experience. Mm -hmm. Andrew, go to, go to Russia. Don't, don't be the HR manager in Russia, but be, be a customer service manager, what have you. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, you know, for all for all the reasons you've described, but so often, I mean, that doesn't happen. Uh, mm -hmm. it, we just, it, it just, it's very difficult to do that for for a number of reasons. Um, but I, I think what I'm hearing is that you know, is it's maybe maybe it's time to really prioritize that uh, and make that uh, much more central to how we grow talent within within the yeah. HR field. Uh, or at least, you know, if we're looking at a couple of career tracks within HR, maybe you've got the more administrative track, but certainly the track relating to HR business partner, which mm -hmm. then perhaps goes into the into the upper strategic echelons of HR leadership. Yeah. They need to go through this line experience, and it's it's not a nice to have. It's a it's a requirement. It's a must have. It's, it's a requirement. Yeah, but I, I and I fully understand that not every organization has that opportunity to send people around the globe, or you know, even within one one country to send them to all different kind of locations. At the same time, maybe on a, on a more micro level, you know, if you can be part as an HR person, as an HR specialist, um, be part of a project team. Mm where there's people in, in, in a group that, you know, from all different kinds of functions in your organization. Mm -hmm. you, you get the, if, if you are interested, if you are curious, if you ask questions instead of making statements, you'll probably learn a lot of what's going on and what keeps them busy um, and what keeps them awake at night. 
Um, That's a great idea. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a micro level. You know, everybody can do that. Um, try to be part of a project team and, and, and basically re report back into the HR function to the group, to your peers and say, this is what I experienced. This is what they're running into. You know, have you seen that at other projects and what does it mean? You know, is there something that we can do? Can we provide something? Can we do something at, here is a problem that they have in manufacturing. Can we do something in, during the onboarding cycle or in the first year that people that are with us, that we make sure that they are prepared for the challenges that they're going to be facing there. Uh, if we talk about it's impossible to find people at this moment, uh, and therefore our backlog is huge, you know, what, what can we do from, uh, you see, look at all the different kind of generations and making sure that the older generations have a valuable knowledge transfer position within your organization. That's one of the opportunities, transferring the knowledge to those people that are in need of it, and at the same time, keep, keeping everybody employed in, into a level that they still have an added value. And cool. that, that is something that I think HR on every level can do. Super. And that would be certainly an, an easy, relatively simple thing to yeah. implement. Um, yeah. I, I love that. <clears throat> so, you know, I know that you've, uh, you've led a number of um, HR teams, um, mm -hmm. I think globally as well as national yeah. or regional. Yeah. Um, so how, how did you, um, you know, with, with the standards that you have, the business perspective and background that you bring, um, how did you build an HR function that operated as a true strategic business partner? Mm, what practical yeah. steps have you taken that we can learn from? And I'm going to take notes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Practically, how do you do it? Oh, okay. Result. So it's, yeah. it's important. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Uh, you've yeah. seen it, you've practiced mm -hmm. it. So help me, what, what practical steps can I do to yeah. build an HR function <clears throat> that operates as a, as a true strategic partner? Yeah, uh, as, as, as a former rule, what I do whenever hiring people in HR business partner roles, and let's say, let's take a perspective from what I was a global leader at Leica Microsystems, uh, one of the Danaher companies. Um, I always looked at the characteristics of a person. Mm. Skill sets, yes. Performance, yes. But looking at the characteristics of, are you curious? Do you want to help? Do you want to be involved in stuff that you have not been involved in before? You know, are you willing to take a calculated risk in working with different cultures, working in different areas, working in different functions, and I'm just learn from that, you know, be in learning mode. And once, once you find that, then it's all depending on whether people are more on the attraction or retention of talent part, whether they're more on the, on the, on the business side from an, uh, an acquisitions and mergers, or whether they're more on um, you know, the comp and band side. Uh, all of them very valuable, all of them very important, but it, it's, 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 it's more like your characteristics, the personality that has a huge impact um, and the willingness to, if you become an HR business partner for finance, that you are willing to understand what finance is all about in your organization. Yeah. If you're working for R&D as a business partner, that you fully understand what the challenges are of that R&D organization. So that you don't step in and say, hey, I'm gonna tell you what HR is all about, because it's not a doing HR just for the sake of HR. And I think that's for me, always looking at people, are you talking about HR because you are HR, or are you talking about HR because you're supporting the business? And those are the examples that you get. Mm -hmm. um, me is, um, I don't like, you know, having to, you know, taking the box exercise. Mm -hmm. I just don't like it, you know. Um, if I hear stories about, hey, you know, we implemented this and we implemented that, I, I'm not overly excited. Uh, to me, it's more like what, what the business needed, you know, what were they looking for and what did you do to help them 
you know, achieve that. Yeah. And that's, that's the kind of thing that I would look for in people, basically on every kind of level. And mm -hmm. whether it's operational, tactical, or strategical, that's the same approach there. You just get different items, more complexity, but the approach is the same. So how, how, uh, how different do you see the, um, the, 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 the candidate for, for an HR business partnering role um, different from, from a, from a non-HR business partnering role? Um, obviously, they bring the, the technical expertise. Um, hmm. They may ask you questions about the business. But beyond that, what, what, yeah. what, what is important in building your team? Yeah. It's very important. There's a big diversity in the team. I think that's um, a big cultural diversity. And now we're talking about a global team, right? It's that, that I find important um, that it's not all a headquarters team and all coming from the same area. Um, just to avoid the non-invented air syndrome um, and making sure everybody is rep all all regions are represented. That's what I look at. Mm. Um, hopefully, you know, several people come from different backgrounds and different uh, areas and different functions before being part of HR mm. um, to get some of the, of the working knowledge diversity. Um, and then it's, it's often to see those people that are not as much in the administrative roles, um, that they fully understand what the um, value is of a top-notch operational excellence level. Mm. Um, H HR admin is one of the areas um, which is part of keeping the trains, you know, running on time. You, you, everybody, uh, you know, expects their paycheck in time. Mm -hmm. you, you cannot overperform there. Right, right. You know, it's yeah. just what they, they, they expect top performance time and time again. But like, like I said, you know, when we started is that the HR business partner roles and how I, you know, look at them and see how they develop. If they've been through that phase or um, have understand that good HR business partnership is a full-time job and that you have, the, the, again, the curiosity to understand the business, then, then to me, you made already a huge step from the admin part to the business partner. Awesome. So it is, it is a unique role. I mean, oftentimes there's the assumption that um, you know, as you do your rotations through through HR, you'll eventually get into an HR VP role yeah. uh, and, and be qualified just because you've done time in comp and bend, maybe some time in training, some mm. time in recruitment. So, you know, you're, you're all rounded. You'd yeah. be a great HR business partner. And, and that, that may not be the case because it is, you know, HR business partner is a unique animal in many respects. Yeah, and then maybe some, some examples to give with that is like, um, well, what I've worked uh, with, 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 with my colleagues on was if, if you do an organizational review and said, are we ready to reach our goals in year one, two, and three from now? Um, you can do this per region. You can do this per function. Um, who is ready and who is not? You know, you make a traffic light approach to it. You say, hey, you know what? Um, the, the, the UK is green and ready. Uh, the Netherlands is, is not ready, they're red, and Germany, uh, they're orange, you know, it's, they're almost there, but not yet there. And at the same time, you can do this by division of, of a business unit, you get an overview. Then you get to an action point and say, all right, what's the reason why a country is not ready? I, I like the continuous improvement way of thinking and say, let's do the five why approach on this. Mm -hmm. you know, and all of a sudden we start to implement tools that a lot of time you see in manufacturing areas. Now let's apply this to HR. All of a sudden I'm presenting a Pareto uh, approach into an HR topic. Now that confuses people. <laughs> Let me tell you, Andrew, that confuses people. I say, well, where is he coming from? Yeah, right. But all of a sudden you get to the point and say, okay, uh, what's the short-term solution? What's the long-term solution? I love it, yeah, yeah. it's all great. Yeah. Uh, great questions, it, great, thank you. 
And it, and, and, it, and it's that thing when if, if people, you know, if I can get people in my team that think that way, I'm thrilled. That's awesome. And, yeah. Which means they will look yeah. at the data, they will look at the organization, they look at what's needed, they will look at, look at uh, root causes of why something is not working, and they come up with countermeasures. You know, yeah, that's awesome. That's true. You get project yeah. plan, actions, who is yeah. responsible. Well, yeah. you know, everybody in project management and continuous improvement will love you for it. Yeah. You can actually do a Kaizen on it if you wanted to. So that's a different approach to HR. Yeah, that's very different. You probably I, think don't that, feel it. I think that was part of my point too. I think, you know, when you start talking about HR business partner, mm -hmm. uh, we assume it's just, um, it's, it's an HR generalist role per se. And, you know, qualifications are simply that you, you sort of have the, <clears throat> the, the foundational sort of practices yep. of, of HR, but uh, there, there may be more uh, associated with that. There's more I think you've, yeah. you've given a great example of that. <clears throat> so having said that, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of literature and, and maybe some movies, I don't know, but mm -hmm. certainly a lot of people speaking about, um, you know, about this topic. Uh, yeah. And I think we kind of get it, you know, intuitively, it's something that people understand, you know, it's, it's, it's a very important uh, resource in the, in the organization, but yet companies continue to struggle. And, you know, mm -hmm. we've seen, I've seen it recently in my, my, la my latest uh, experience uh, in the Middle East. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's a challenge. It's, it's easier said than done, essentially. Um, and, you know, going back to this McKinsey paper, they, um, they, they, spoke about a, um, a survey that they conducted recently where the vast majority of CEOs are still not getting the service level that they require from this, from this important role. All recognize its strategic value and its important importance, but recognize they're not getting what they need. Mm. So w w w why not? Oh, we're we're still not there, there, Luke, right? I, I it's know. still, you know, I'm busy. This sounds great, but man, I got things to do. It's a busy yeah. day. How do I get yeah. to this, this space? And especially oh, yeah, when yeah. we go, as we're going into this 21st century, it's becoming very, very important. Yeah, it's, 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 I, I, I like to answer that. Well, first of all, been there, done that, you know, it's like, yeah, they, the craze of the day will prevent, you know, whatever you're trying to achieve. And still, now, let me, let me turn it around, Andrew, and say, you know, who of the CEOs in the organizations at this point in time fully understand what their HR counterpart can give them, should give them? You know, can they describe what they need? Well, that's a very good question, but I would turn it around. <laughs> mm. And I would say, how well are we communicating our value? Yeah, you know, uh, and Which, part of that is we don't know the business in some cases. I mean, yeah. it's 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 not so simple. Yeah. And, and and I think go, going back to this, and you know, and this is a great uh, article, mm -hmm. uh, but I think maybe there's something that we can leave viewers and listeners to think about, which I think may make some sense. And you can shed some light on this, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and and so let me ask you here. Um, what McKinsey said was that while the value of a great HR business partner remains unquestioned, yeah. the structure of the HR business partner role requires re-engineering, mm. reimagining. Um, and you know, so the question is, you know, is it time to give the HR business partner that particular role a different set of responsibilities and accountabilities to enhance its overall contribution? And, and I, th I think what they were referring to was, you know, things like um, take away all transactional responsibilities, oh, yeah. for example, sure. from this particular role, make yeah. it entirely strategic. So mm -hmm. really rethink this role, keeping mm -hmm. it the way it's been, where you are an HR manager or personnel manager, you're called an HR business partner, and you do the partnering when you have time, change that to, you know, move out the transaction, and, and structure that role to be, you know, yep. wholly uh, strategic. Mm -hmm. and, and I think we've been talking about it, you know, you know, today is like, it's a full-time role. So taking out the admin, taking all the transactional stuff, absolutely. Um, I, I would actually see at some point in time, 
people have been through the HR admin role and have developed into something different, why would they want to go back to the admin role? Mm. How valuable that it is and that you absolutely need it, but you, you, you don't see it a lot. If you've been in accounting um, and um, you moved your way up into financial analysis, you don't see a lot of move back that you go back to accounting. You know, what I'm trying to say is that if 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 if, if you if, if you worked in, in in your organization as a um, as 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 a sales uh, specialist, then all of a sudden, if you get like a region, it it rarely happens that you go back in selling that one particular product. You know, and 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 same as for HR, there 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 is an evolution, there is there's a growth, there is while learning from, from a generalist perspective, what all, what all you can do, you become a specialist. And from there, you make a choice. Do I want to stay a specialist forever or transition into the business approach where you become the HR business partner? Now, the reason I just said, let's ask the CEO of a company what they need from HR means that how much dialogue is there and say, I need something in particular from an organization perspective, from a people perspective, from a um, sustainability perspective that says, if I cannot have a, a strong retention within the organization with a high engagement and the right people at the right place, um, with the full talent development and all capability development that is there, I will not be able to reach my goals. Full stop. Full stop. That's what it is. If, if, if that is not there and the thinking is at the C level um, that, oh, whatever we're going to need, we'll run into it. And let's mm. guess what? We'll hire it from the outside, mm. which means you, you'll, you'll be adding people into your organization who are not in a team like them. Those who are there for a couple of years, they probably mm. leave. Mm -hmm. And therefore, all of the history and all of the connections will leave. And therefore, you start reinventing yourself time and time and time again. Yeah. My, my it's expensive. not so humble opinion. It's, no, it's yeah. great. It's expensive and hard to sustain that. Yeah, so, so this is kind of an interesting question. I mean, let's, if we think about this new, new century that we're in, uh, just from, mm -hmm. a, from a context, contextual perspective, uh, how do you see um, the, the, the role of the HR business partner uh, cha changing, changed, mm -hmm. changing? Yeah. Yeah, uh, um, at this moment, I would think that, uh, first of all, globalization- What will be different you, for them? What will well, be different for them? From, I think globalization has a big impact, mm -hmm. uh, just to start off with. Um, then, then all of the, the, the analytics that are out there uh, have a huge impact. Um, if, if you look only all, every, everything, everything that generates data, everything that you, you look at at a certain perspective is that, okay, we, we are used you know, from the generation that worked with paper and travel, you know, the, you know some, um, I think the new generations, uh, yeah, right. every, every, everything is digital, right? Uh -huh. and, yeah. and, and travel will do that for fun, but why for business? Yeah. You know, then, then you look at, look at companies around us. You know, the, the, the biggest hotel chain in the world doesn't own a brick, you know, Airbnb. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's like the big, biggest taxi company in the world doesn't own a car, Uber. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's kind of interesting. It's, it's, those, are, those are new models, right? Yeah. It's like a different competition. Uh, Amazon is selling houses, mm -hmm. you know? So, so what happened? All of a sudden you go online and somebody puts a house in your, in, in, in your mailbox. Yeah. How does that work? You know, yeah. these, are, these are the kind of yeah. challenges that as an HR business partner you you need to be prepared for it's it's there it's not like science fiction anymore <clears throat> it's not like a star wars or star trek movie that we're all witnessing and thinking hey that looks kind of neat you know wish we were there well guess what you've been there for a couple of years mm. if you look at the whole flow of businesses you know, let's stick to a buying a house Andrew. it's like so what, what do you do? You go to, you go to an architect, he'll, he'll probably draw up a nice house for you. You go to a construction company, you try to get all the permits, you'll, you'll go to a, to a mortgage provider, you go to an insurance provider, you, all these kind of things together, 
you go to one platform nowadays and you get all of these things that you need. So this, this whole logical chain that you were looking at is gone. It's, it's, it's like going to a supermarket, you know, becomes like one of the rare things that we still touch the product before mm -hmm. we buy it. You know, it's, it's, it's these kind of things. Owning a car, um, I see it happening that, you know, like you see it with, with bicycles already. You know, I'm come from, from the country of bicycles, 17 million inhabitants, 17 million bikes. Um, so you, you can pick up a bike basically everywhere without stealing it, you know, because it's there, you know, you 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 without stealing it. Yeah. <laughs> you, you rent it and you bring it from one place to another. Yeah. Thinking about these business models, yeah. as an HR person, seeing what it is, what is My virtual reality, augmented reality, you know, artificial intelligence, how they have an impact on your business, not tomorrow, but the day after, hmm. you know, and what does it mean? So if you sit in a strategic meeting, can you bring forward from a proactive perspective, what the new things in different markets already have an impact in your market a couple of days, a couple of years from now? Hmm. I think that's changing at this very moment. Um, and what we said before, using data, HR analytics, mm -hmm. to, to come up with scenarios, to, to make calculated models, um, to see you know, what we're looking at. Look at the, I mean, gee, right now, if you look at it, there's four generations working in every company nowadays. Mm. Um, completely different perspectives uh, from how to communicate with each other. Mm. The younger generations at this moment, everybody with their smartphones and their, and their tablets, they're all about self-service. Mm. Oh, they don't want to fill out papers anymore. They want to go online 24 seven and do all that stuff themselves. Cause that's how they're being educated. Mm -hmm. All the, you know, digital tools that they're provided in schools and universities helps them going into the market, you know, labor market. And, and, and there is HR, you need to be ready to provide all of that. And that's where I'm saying HR admin is going to look completely different than a couple of years from now. Mm because it's not as necessary anymore as it is. It's already from a self-service provider into, you know, your people do it yourself. This is full service internally, also from a management perspective. You pick up the data you need. Now you need to have somebody to help you analyze the data and see what it means for my business. So the, the HR business partner role is, is going to become even more important. Is that what I mean. That's that that that's absolutely what it it's is. It's almost it's, a consolidation around that strategic yeah. value partner. It becomes uh, a consultant. It's your internal consultant. Internal consultant, exactly. Yeah. Absolutely, and helping uh, uh, your business leader to understand. Hey, guess what? In two, three years from now, you know, we'll we'll have an aged population, and um, here is you know, a group of people that go into pension age. Mm -hmm. you know, this is what it means. This is the kind of knowledge that you are about to lose. Here was a plan of knowledge transfer, and here is what we need to hire at the various levels or bring an organization, do a merger or an acquisition to bring in, you know, the knowledge that we need instantly. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a completely different approach, Andrew. Um, cool. Cool. It's full so I, I think, you know, with, with this, uh, particularly since so many of us uh, across business functions, you know, have questions about the future, Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be, I think, you know, it, it, as we're thinking about a success profile or, you know, for, for, the, uh, for the 21st century, uh, one of the, you know, areas I think that are going to be very important is, is this ability to, to say no or to challenge the business in, in, with confidence, because that's not right. something that, uh, you know, for, for a number of good reasons and some not so good reasons, we've not done well, but it's mm -hmm. so critical. Um, would you, would you agree with that? Oh yeah, absolutely. It's, um, I, I, one of the things I like to do in my career, Andrew, was like, you know, play a, a role of consultant, the counselor and, and, and ask critical questions and continue to ask questions. What have we been thinking about? What's the SWOT analysis for your you know, business unit mm. or the vision or function. Um, asking the questions, having the capability to listen, look at it from a different angle. 
um, being the devil's advocate. Um, th these kind of things, looking at their leadership and say, if, if you talk about we need to delegate more in our organization, and the first thing as a leader you do is keep everything close to yourself, be very directive, um, who is going to talk about that? That's mm -hmm. the role of the HR business partner. Mm -hmm. So you, 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 you need to be strong as a person to give feedback in a way with keeping your relationship uh, and, and, and being seen by, by other leaders as somebody, as a trusted advisor. Um, the word trusted is totally important here. Well, these, I mean, this is beautiful. This is exactly sort of, I was fortunate to have a mentor and, 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 I, and I think that's an important part of, you know, as we go into, unfortunately, our last question, uh, mm -hmm. Luke, today around development. Um, you know, I was very fortunate uh, that uh, I, I could see this play out. I, I, could, mm -hmm. I could watch my, my manager or my senior manager, you know, do this. And, and I learned from that. And, uh, you know, it's, it's um, I think the, the whole coaching is, is really something that needs to be uh, maybe uh, included uh, in, the, in the HR development uh, platform or program. Um, you know, we go to courses, we get certifications, but who shows us in real life, you know, how this is done? And I tell you, I would, you know, I would learn so much working for you in a day than I would in a seminar for three days on how to be an HR business partner. Uh, and I can only imagine, you know, those in your team, how much they've learned. And I've seen it as a peer working with you alongside you in the past. Uh, it's, it's incredible to, to see that. So I hope that, you know, those that may be listening and, and so on might consider um, more uh, effort uh, in, you know, helping those that follow you to really see how this is done, you know, walk the talk. Um, so as you, as you look to the future, Luke, uh, as we, as we look to this 24th century, this, this evolving, right. evolving uh, workplace, you know, it's getting pretty complicated out there. We know yeah. how important this role is and, mm. and the need for it to really lend uh, value. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Give us five, give us five proven development strategies that will help me get to that, to that place. Yeah. Well, Any strategies that you've used for yourself or for your team. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, let, let, let me start with the obvious one, um, which is understand your business, understand the strategy, understand, um, and be part of, and, and be asked questions about what the real uh, goals and objectives of your organization are. Mm. You know, that's, 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 and, and, and it's not only HR, it's, it's for every role. I find if you want to make the connection internally, that's what you focus on. Um, second is globalization. Uh, understand that we are in a 24 seven within a split second, you know, information available mm -hmm. uh, environment. Mm -hmm. Which, which means everybody has an opinion, everybody can find information, everybody can fact check whatever is there. You, know, you need to be on top of that. Mm. Because before you know it, things are changing, you need to be right in the middle of it. So mm. understanding your environment here and in other parts of the world, time zones and cultures that is there, because that's where your talent is. They're also mm. in various parts of the world um, and like we do right now, you know, video calls may, makes it very easy to make a connection, you know, so, so, so that is there. The other thing to me is employer branding and recruitment marketing. We haven't talked about it a lot in, in, in this call, mm -hmm. but I think the employer brand is so, so important and it starts internally. Mm -hmm not only what you hope to achieve, but what are you achieving? What are you doing that you're being clear and tell everybody, this is what you guys see within mm -hmm. this organization. This is what you feel. This is the language that we use and leadership by example helps that to get that branding done. Why, if you go externally, you know, and people, you know, employees are asked from people from the outside, hey, it's, this is what I read about the company. They will go, yeah, yeah, that's what they wish, but it's far from having that in place. That's, that's, it's, it's, 
it's 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 devastating if that happens. So internal focus first, you know, and 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 then have the right recruitment marketing that you have the right tools, the right testimonial testimonials, and referral programs to bring people on board. Have them being curious. They need to be willing to be part of your organization, be part of that community, um, mm -hmm. and therefore find the purpose that is there. Um, I always think that retention is, is a key strategy within your organization, but not to the full cost of keeping everybody on board. Mm. Like with everything, there's a time and place. What brought you here will not bring you in, into the next step. So not necessarily, but those people who are capable and willing to change make sure that they have a place in your organization because they bring history along and they can connect the dots where the newcomers have a problem connecting those. Mm -hmm. That's, and therefore you get like sustainable employability. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, what do we need to do and focus on that? And from a branding perspective, it's a great, great tool to attract talent into your organization because it means that you're thinking on all different kinds of generations and all different kinds of levels um, to work with that. Um, and, and maybe one other thing is that um, leadership development is not only for the happy few at the top. Mm. Leadership development means for everybody who wants to be developed, you know, focus on um, personality, behavior, cultural impact, um, all of these things that make us unique as humans and at the same time have a huge impact how we do business and how we're being perceived from the outside and inside for that matter. Cool. And I think those, those are the areas that I would. Well, if I could just ask briefly. Um, yeah. So if, if, I was, uh, if I were on your team, I aspire to be an HR business partner in the next three mm. years. Mm. What would you have me do to get ready? Right. Um, now, given the complexities that you've outlined, yeah. Well, I show the potential, I'll yeah. learn the business, but what else do I need to do? What else do I need to demonstrate that mm. will convince you that I would be ready for that type of role? Yeah, multi dollar question here. Um, but it's from your gut because you're so good well, at this. I mean, oh, know. hey, I don't know. It, it's. I do know it's the, what I've done so far is that work with people that that if I tell them, you know, we need to talk about how we connect your skill set with the goals of the organizations that people come back and say, okay, how do I find out what, what, what my, what my business really needs. Mm -hmm. And therefore we can talk about, all right, so are you open to be part of a project team of that business? Mm. I'll allocate you there for four weeks or eight weeks just to figure out what it is mm -hmm. and be immersed in what good looks like for them. Then good. you come back and you tell me what you've learned. Mm. I'm not going to tell you what you need to do. You come cool. back and tell me cool. what the yeah. business is all about. Cool. Cool. Okay. Keep going. So that's ah. two out of five. <laughs> oh, going. gee. <laughs> <laughs> no, this, this, this is yeah. really important. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, yeah. I, know. I know. This is I, 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 I want to get there. I got three years. Yeah, it's uh, well. Here you go. It's like uh, you probably will be presenting at the first meeting that we have as an HR team. Mm. Even if you just knew and you don't know what this is all about, you will be presenting, which means that you will be focusing on what you know so far, and we just put the baseline and said, "All right, this is what you know. Here's what we are." Now that you've seen this, what, what will be the next step that you want to focus on? And that tells me already where the preference lies and what the curiosity is of people. So cool. which, means, which means, Andrew, that people that are working for me have a high curiosity, but also uh, a drive to develop themselves. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yep. Yeah, they have a strong aspiration. Yeah, to, that's, to, that's to grow, good. learning agility and all that good stuff. That's, that, uh, that's that is important. there. Uh, absolutely. Cool. Yep. Well, I tell you, look, you know, I could talk to you all day. Um, it's just, uh, it's, it's fantastic. Um, it's I uh, really uh, appreciate the time that you've taken today. My pleasure. Uh, to share some, some insight on this very important topic. 
um, and, yes. and for sharing yes. your immense uh, experience. Uh, no doubt you will be helping others to embrace a transformative approach to HR business partnering. I and, certainly and a, hope so. Yeah, yeah, an approach that will lend greater value to business outcomes and to, and to individual professional satisfaction. You know, I think, you know, if we can overcome some of these obstacles that we talked about today, the job satisfaction, the level of engagement will, will also be positively affected, uh, speaking from experience as well. Absolutely. So thanks everyone for joining us. Tune in next time for another Talent Miners podcast. And uh, Luke, thank you so much for joining us. Everyone have Absolutely. a great day.